Welcome to Paris. I'm Luke Martin, and this is 24 hours of eating in the city of love. So the plan today in Paris is just to eat, eat, eat. And of course we're gonna do some sightseeing as well, but we don't wanna take you to like the touristy spots that you see on TikTok and Instagram all the time with crappy food. We wanna take you to places with real authentic, delicious French food. So that's the plan for today. And the first stop is just down the street. This is our first stop, it's Caractère de Cochon, which means pig character. They are super famous for their ham sandwiches. It's right across the street from the Marché des Enfants Rouges, a very famous market here in Paris. So we're gonna go jump in line and order ourselves up a famous jambon bleu. So the character of the Cochon is just a takeaway shop only, and the way that it works is one at a time you'll enter the shop, and it's kind of like a bespoke sandwich. You can sort of tell them what flavor you want. I just went with a classic jambon beurre, but they have all kinds of different ham. You can get cooked ham, smoked hams, cured hams, and I ordered mine with a jambon blanc, the white ham, but also with a wild garlic in it. So you can see it's kind of like a spiced ham. There's some wild garlic, and it's served in this beautiful baguette, and then there should be I don't know if you can see it back there, a nice slab of uh, butter on there. And this is like the most famous sandwich in all of France. I read something online that said they sell like 2.2 million of these per day. That's almost a billion jambon beurres sold in France every year, which is insane. And this place is super famous for it, so let's try it out. Really soft meat and you can taste that garlic flavor in there the baguette is perfectly cooked crisp i feel like this is just a perfect summary of french food in general meat and bread and butter it's just so classic but look at how overflowing it is with the ham they had all kinds of other ones in there i feel like i'm the only person who goes in ordering just a classic jambon bar everybody was getting like with artichokes with pickles all kinds of different sauces truffles this that but i just want to try the most typical french jambon bar Mm. Very good. If you like ham, you'll love it. Once you get a little deeper and you start getting to the butter, it gets even better. And what's kind of ironic is that it's called Caractère de Cochon. Everything is pig theme, all pork in there, but they give it to you in this uh, cow patterned <laughs> uh, wrapper, which is kind of weird. Mm. The bread, it's got such a bite to it. Yum. I like that he doesn't put a lot of butter in it, so it doesn't overpower the taste of the ham it's good so that was 14 euros 40 for the sandwich paris is definitely pricey but man this city is undeniably beautiful however i will add to that it really stinks in Paris. You get a lot of really bad smells of trash and of urine, <laughs> but then you also walk past boulangeries and you smell the fresh baked goods, so it's kind of like a toss up. Next up, another typical French snack, this time crepe. And I just went to a place called La Drugarie. Uh, whoever said French people were not friendly because that guy was super, super friendly. He had all kinds of different uh, crepes. You can get all kinds of different toppings. I ordered with Nutella and almonds and just standing in front of the beautiful, beautiful background here. And I've got my crepe. You can see just this uh, thin pancake with the Nutella and almonds. And actually Paris is just the first stop on our tour here in France. We will actually be going to Brittany next, which is known for its uh, crepes and galettes. So we'll be trying them again there, but we wanted to check out this Ooh, place today. It's got really good reviews, so let's try it. Mm. Oh, there's so many different layers. Having it wrapped up like this is amazing because you get like crepe, Almond, Nutella, crap, almond, Nutella. Oh, that was actually really, really good. Look at that, yum. 
He didn't like load on the Nutella or anything, so it's not super sweet. It's actually all about that pancake, so thin. Huh. Not pancake. Crap. Oh. Mm. Wow. The Nutella is not too much. Make the crepes not too sweet and it's perfect with the crunchiness of the almond. It's soft. I love it. It's perfect dessert. How's Ming's food reviews, guys? Leave a comment <laughs> down below. She's just starting out, so. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, you're doing a good job. You like the crepe? Mm-hmm. Mm. It's perfect. It's not like when we when we get a crepe in Thailand. Mm. It's, it's super crispy. crunchy, crispy, yeah. Like as soon as you bite it, it just breaks into a million pieces. This is fluffy. My first real crepe in France. It's actually so good. Oh. It's like you put the, put the perfect amount of Nutella. Oh my God, look at that. Yum. All right, let's continue on our dessert tour of Paris. We're gonna pop into a boulangerie, a typical Parisian bakery for some baked goods next. So we just popped into a boulangerie, a typical Parisian bakery. It's called Dupin et des Idées. And we picked up two uh, specialties of the bakery. The first is a classic uh, chocolatine or pain au chocolat. And then the second is something a little bit more unique. Uh, it's escargot, but not the escargot you're thinking of. This is a pastry escargot. It's called escargot because of the shape. It looks like a snail shell and it's with pistachios and also with uh, chocolate chips. So let's try this one. Mm. Oh, just layers upon layers of pastry. You definitely get like hints of the nutty pistachio and a little bit sweet from the chocolate. Mm. So you can see the pastry just spiraling around layers of chocolate chips and pistachios. It, it's really good. A little bit dry, but really good. Sitting beside the canal here in Paris, very Parisian having <laughs> the pastries here. So whether you call this a chocolatine or a pen au chocolat, I guess it depends on what part of France you're coming from. Either way you call it, it's definitely one of the most famous pastries in all of France. Oh, that's amazing. Really classic. Just look at those paper thin flaky layers. And then you got a nice layer of chocolate in there. Basically a croissant with the chocolate on the inside. Mm. So delicate and airy. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yum, that's a great pan of chocolat. I now I understand why the escargot is famous for. It's really good. Like at first, I'm sorry because there's a long line, so I kind of like judge it a little bit. Like, mm, is it going to be that good because it's so popular? But when I try it, it's really good. And I don't know what's the name. I can't pronounce it. Do pang a days e days e days. <laughs> I'm sorry, my friend. It's not nice. But if if you are in Paris, I recommend this one that you should try, and especially that this there is cargo. It's good, especially with the coffee too. How much was the coffee? Oh my god, that coffee is quite expensive. It's like six euros. six euros. In typical Parisian fashion, it is about midday now, and that means it's time to start drinking wine. So we're going to a wine bar next. lines here in Paris you actually have to open the door manually so don't be caught standing there waiting for the door to auto open and miss your stop. So we've just come to Selfie Central here in Paris. This is probably the most Instagrammed spot in all of Paris. I don't even know the name, but it's just on the backside of the Louvre. And it's quite beautiful. It's got these little black and white striped uh, kind of pedestal things that everybody sits on. But don't get in the background of anyone's picture because I'll tell you in a move like that girl just told me back over there. So we 
come to this beautiful wine bar inside of an area called Gallery Vivian. It's kind of a covered shopping arcade with these incredible tiled floors and glass ceilings. It's gorgeous in here. And this wine bar is called Le Grand Filet Fille. And we just ordered up a bottle of wine. I don't know too much about wine. And when you come to France, it's like it gets extra complicated. So I just asked for a recommendation. And it's a Marcinet wine from uh, Burgundy 2020 beautiful red wine and what an incredible setting. This is so gorgeous here. Let's try it. Yeah. Just ask for the recommendation. You can't go wrong. Beautiful. A little fruity. A little bit tannic. Yum. Our food has arrived. Some beautiful presentation here in Paris. We've got the tuna, white tuna, uh, very medium rare and then served with uh, blackberries and beans. And then over here we've got a fig salad which just looks so beautiful with Piedmont nuts. I'm gonna start with this beautifully cooked tuna. I'm not totally sure what this creamy sauce is on the bottom. Let's try it. Mm. It's actually super light and simple flavor. It's grilled on the outside so it's got a little bit of a char smokiness. And I'm gonna take a blackberry too which is such a cool topping for tuna. Never had that before. It works really well. It's sour, sweet, yeah, explosion. Okay, so this fig salad actually has burrata cheese on the bottom, one of my favorite things in the entire world, and get some of those nuts as well. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's even better than the tuna. There's something about burrata, I just love it. So creamy, strong fig flavor. And it's like a fig uh, puree or cream around it too. Yeah, both very good, but I gotta give it up for this. This is just beautiful. Figs here in France, so good. Mm. Mm. The blackberry is like a sauce on a tuna. It's so good. It's perfect together. Yum. Finished off with our bottle of wine, only 2 p.m. <laughs> That's how you do it here in Paris, I guess. And we are going to do a little bit of sightseeing now, just working our way through Les Jardins du uh, Palais Royal. And we're gonna head to the Louvre and then onwards to the Eiffel Tower eventually. So we have made it to the Louvre, the most famous museum in maybe the entire world, definitely here in Paris. And you've got this beautiful glass pyramid and all these incredible buildings surrounding it with intricate details. We're not gonna actually go inside today. Uh, it is quite uh, an event to go to the Louvre. You're gonna want like all day to go there. We don't have that much time, just 24 hours here in Paris, but uh, all kinds of famous things to see in there in the Louvre. You know, the, you know Mona's in there, right? Mona Lisa? Mona. What is Mona? Mona Lisa. <laughs> yes, I know she's in there. Yeah, unfortunately we're not going to be able to see Miss Lisa today. But it's beautiful from the outside, that's for sure. It is You know, there's not too many places I would say this about, but you see a lot of pictures of the Louvre, and I have to say it's even more beautiful in person. You really gotta come here and see it for yourself. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Every angle is an incredible photo. We're gonna keep going through the Jardin Tuileries and then towards the Eiffel Tower. Just working our way towards the Eiffel Tower, walking along the Seine now, and about to cross this famous bridge. It's called Pont Alexandre uh, III. Beautiful bridge with these golden statues on top, and it is just absolutely stunning here. Paris definitely doesn't disappoint. It is an incredibly beautiful city. So here she is, the most 
famous piece of metal in the entire world. Definitely does not need an introduction. I will say that it is a lot bigger in person than I thought and kind of like rustier looking than I expected to. Still beautiful though. Unfortunately the park in front is definitely not uh, much to see. It's just kind of dirt and millions of people taking selfies but Gotta get your picture here if you're gonna Paris, it's a must. I'd say that this park is probably not the best place you can get a good view of the Eiffel Tower, so we're actually gonna head towards the Shop de Lisée now and have some uh, dessert, macaron, and then we're going to find a better view of the Eiffel Tower. So we've come to get another view of the Eiffel Tower, this time from the Trocadero area. We wanted to go to Trocadero Square, but it seems like it's closed for renovation, so we've come to Trocadero Gardens, beautiful gardens with an incredible view of the Eiffel Tower. And I think before dinner, we're actually gonna get some dessert. We're gonna have some of the famous macarons from La Dore, which is one of the most popular places to have macarons here in Paris. Let's go. We're at Lauderre here on the Champs Elysees, the famous uh, street here with the Arc de Triomphe at the end. And Lauderre is the most famous place for Macron here in Paris, uh, maybe even in the entire world. We ordered up a box of six, it was like 1950 euros. It's beautiful packaging. Let me unveil this to you. So we've got lemon, um, I think that one's salted caramel. This is milk chocolate with coconut, raspberry. This one is um, ca coffee, and then this one's called Mary Antoinette tea. I'm not totally sure. Okay, I'm gonna start with the lemon one. So these uh, macarons are basically meringues, little cookies, and uh, it's made with almond flour. This is lemon. Oh. It's extremely delicate, like super light, airy. That is really good, actually. Nice sour lemon flavor. Crumbly on the outside. Yeah. That's really good. So I'm a coffee lover. I'm gonna go with the coffee flavor one. Mmm, it's really delicate, like you just said. It's like a little bit um, crispy on the outside, and then inside you can taste exactly coffee flavor. I love this one. So this one is called Mary Antoinette Tea. I don't really know what that is. I'm guessing it's some kind of tea flavor, but I just really like the blue, so I got it. Let's try. Mmm. Mmm. It's almost like a rose tea, I think. I can taste some floral flavor in there. Yeah, the, the flavors that they are, like coffee and lemon, are extremely concentrated. You can just taste pure lemon, pure coffee. This one's like a kind of like a tea, milk tea, with like rose or something. Mm. All right, I'm gonna try the raspberry one. So pink, I like it. Oh my god, you can taste a raspberry from it. This macaron from um, this place, this shop, it's different from other macaron that I taste before because from the other place, you just taste only sweet. You didn't taste the exact taste of it. But this place, I think it's worth the wait. And if you come to Paris, you should try from this shop. The Rodery. I feel like we're eating so many desserts today before dinner, so we're gonna save the other two flavors we've got for after dinner tonight. Let's try this raspberry. Yeah. How's it? They're definitely using like real raspberries. Mm. Oh my gosh. Actually super, super good. I didn't think I was a fan of macarons, but man, these are good. Yeah. All right, time for a proper dinner now. <laughs> so 
So for dinner tonight, we are having some typical French food. I picked out a bistro. There are so many to choose from, but this one is called La Fontaine de Mars. It's a really picturesque, beautiful bistro. So we're gonna go inside, order up some classic French food for dinner tonight. This is such a classic French bistro. I love the atmosphere in here. You have the red and white checkered tablecloths and just sitting in this old historic alleyway and order up some really classic French food as well. This here is the famous steak frite. So there's really only two rules with this, I'll say. Order it medium rare and don't ask for ketchup, whatever you do, because it comes with its own beautiful Bernays sauce, which is like an egg yolk with white wine vinegar. And we've also got a, another dish here. This is the duck confit. So it's actually duck leg that has been slow cooked and almost preserved in duck fat. And it just looks so good. Not totally sure what the cut of meat is here. It looks almost like a filet mignon and let's cut this open see if it's been cooked as I requested medium rare that is a thick cut of beef and I'm gonna drown this in Bernays sauce here in a minute oh yeah perfectly cooked look at that beautiful beautiful steak and then let's grab some of the sauce look how thick that is too Bernays sauce just put a heavy coating right on there and the reason why I said don't ask for ketchup is because you're gonna be eating your frites with this Bernays as well. Oh my God. That is amazing. Oh my God, that is tender, tender steak. And it's almost got like a crust on the outside so you also get like a kind of crunch to it as well. The Bernays sauce is just so good. You can taste the white wine vinegar in there. It's got a little bit of a kick. Oh man. That is beautiful, beautiful steak. Oh, what amazing. It wouldn't be steak free with the frites. Let's try some of these French fries, or as they call them here, just fries. Oh my god. That sauce is incredible. It's got a punch. Oh, nice crunchy fries. Pretty normal, but just with that sauce takes it to another level. Okay, I'm gonna have a taste of minx duck confit here. Never tried this actually. Look at that beautiful duck leg, slow cooked in its own fat. That's also very good. So the process of cooking the duck leg confit is because it's generally kind of a tough cut of meat, but that is uh, not tough at all because the confit did its job. It's made it so tender, so smooth. It is a little bit salty though, but uh, it's also got kind of a dry layer on the outside, but still very juicy on the inside. Just shreds apart, falls apart in your mouth. That's so good. The farther I get into this steak, the more and more it looks like it's gonna get up and walk off my plate. That is quite a rare, medium rare, but it's still delicious. Anything with this Barnet sauce is just incredible. And these two dishes, the duck confit and the uh, steak frite, are two of the most classic French dishes. Uh, this is just our first foray into tasting French cuisine on this trip. We're going to be also visiting Lyon, which is known as the gastronomic capital of France, and also uh, Brittany, so I'm very looking forward to it. First time really getting into French French food here in France. It's awesome. All right, dessert time. We've ordered the chocolate mousse. Oh man, this is gonna be rough. We're both so stuffed. <laughs> mm. Oh, at least this is light and airy. Oh, it's delicious. I have no idea what this little thing is here. It honestly looks like a cannoli. I thought it was a cannoli at the beginning. Let's try that. Actually, whipped cream. Oh, that's good. Mm. That was an incredible dinner. So the Fontaine de Mars Bistro, the one we just ate, is just a two minutes walk to the Eiffel Tower, and you have to come back at nighttime. If you see it in the day, come back at nighttime. It's incredible. We just watched it sparkling. It only does it for like a few minutes sparkling, but it is just absolutely beautiful. What a day of eating here in Paris. So much good food, so many rich flavors, some of it a little bit heavy. We are stuffed. It's been a great day. I hope you guys enjoyed. All of the information for the places we visited will be down in the description box. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. We've got more videos coming from France. See you on the next episode of Chopstick Drama. It's a rat running by.